So hi, I'm Bernie, and um, I'm introducing Edward. Edward is a app for relief shading, and uh, this is the result of uh, a research project by ETH Zurich and uh, Monash University in, in Melbourne, and uh, the project partners are Dilbrit Singh, um, so Dilbrit Singh, Magnus Heinzler, Mariana Farmakis, uh, Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Horney, and myself. So I would like to start by thanking National Geographic Society for funding this project. Thank you very much. A big, big thank you to Tom Patterson for um, his input and uh, continuous stream of ideas and beta testing. And also many thanks to the beta testers who helped us develop Edward. So what is Edward? <clears throat> Edward is... Uh, an app for relief shading, and it uses machine learning. Um, so Edward learned from manual shaded reliefs that were created by uh, Swiss topo cartographers for their uh, national map series. But you don't need to know anything about machine learning when you're using Edward. So when you use Edward, <coughs> you import an elevation model, you tweak the shading settings, and then you export. Um, a shading. So that's what I'm going to show you here. And uh, I'm going to give you a crash course in Edward, actually. So um, let, let's get started. So first I import a shaded relief image. I use here a, um, a, a sorry, an elevation model. I'm using an elevation model of Yellowstone National Park. And this is uh, the default shading style in, in Edward. So the first thing that you uh, can adjust is the shading style. There are three styles. This one here is the detailed large-scale shading style. <clears throat> there is a medium-scale shading style which accentuates the large landforms and mountain ridges. And there is a small-scale shading style that um, creates these nice uh, grayscale gradients and also applies quite a bit of generalization. So here are the different shading styles. This is the large scale one, very detailed. Then there is the medium scale one that accentuates the landforms. And then there's the small scale one which applies generalization and uh, creates nice gradients. And in comparison, this is a standard shading created from the same um, elevation model. So <clears throat> once you have selected the shading style, you can then adjust the um, illumination direction. And Amy just talked about relief inversion, but so let's create some relief inversion here. Um, so you select the global illumination direction here from the south, for example, and Edward then locally adjusts the, the, uh, the light direction to the local landforms. I'm going to use the top left illumination because that actually works quite nicely for most shadings. Then there is aerial perspective. Aerial perspective helps you make mountains stand out from in the relief. So, I'm going to remove aerial perspective first here. You can see that this creates a very contrasty image. Contrast is very strong from the bottom of elevations to the top elevations. And now I'm in increasing aerial perspective here. And uh, this is probably a bit too much, but it nicely illustrates the effect. So a value of 50 or a medium value, uh, value usually works quite nicely. So this was a bit fast, so let's recap. So <clears throat> this uh, image here is without any aerial perspective, very strong contrast throughout, and then we increase aerial perspective. This is the maximum we can apply, and as I said, the value of 50 usually works quite nicely. <clears throat> so what do you do if you don't have a elevation model of the area, of the area that you want to, to shade. So um, Edward includes a um, easy to use download tool for elevation models. 
Here I'm zooming on the Olympics National Park. I can adjust and tweak the area that I'm going to download. I have the choice from different types of elevation models, NASA-DEM, SRTM, and maps and terrain tiles. I'm going to use the ALOS, ALOS elevation model. So ALOS is a Japanese global elevation model, and we are now downloading an elevation model from Open Topography. It's, it's an open source server. We're saving that um, elevation model in a GeoTIFF file. And uh, once that's done, Edward creates that shading here. Um, I'm going to, to continue with this, this elevation model here and um, look at the generalization options. So uh, here I use a, um, a, a, a medium scale style, as you can see on the top right, and I'm not applying any generalization. So for generalization, there are two options. One is the macro slider and one is the micro slider. The macro slider um, accentuates the large landforms and the micro slider remove small details. So uh, I'm going to adjust the macro slider first. Um, increasing this makes the large landforms uh, pop out, as you can see. But at a certain point, the uh, image gets a bit grainy and noisy. So at this point, we can uh, add some micro generalization and remove some details, which I'm doing now here. And if you want to create a small scale map, you can apply more here. Also again, so that was a bit fast, so let's recap. So we started with the Olympics uh, elevation model without any generalization. I apply a macro generalization. At this point here, it gets a bit noisy. So we can add some, remove some details here with the micro slider. And if we want to do a very small scale map, we can increase that value. Of course, the, the, the generalization settings will depend with your cell size of the grid and um, your map scale and, and your map, map purpose. Um, often, uh, there are not many details in, in flat areas, which is a problem. So if we want to add some details here in flat areas, there is a tool that allows you to accentuate details. <clears throat> And I'm going to increase this amount slider in a few steps. And you can see the details start to pop out. This is the maximum that we can apply. Whether that's useful, that depends on the map purpose, probably. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the level of details or the size of the details, in this case, fits quite nicely with the rest of the, of the shading. Um, but I can adjust the size of the details that I'm adding. So with the size slider, I can increase the size of those details. And you can see now the, the details are, the, are, are much more coarse. But in this case, smaller, a smaller size probably uh, works nicely. So, okay, so let's, let's recap that again. So I started with this empty flat area. I added um, some details in three steps, and then I have the option to adjust the size of those details. This is probably too large, so I went back to something like this. Um, we also need to tell Edward what kind of terrain we are shading. So, whether we, so we need to tell Edward whether it's an alpine um, terrain, whether it's a hilly terrain, or whether it's a flat terrain. If we are shading a, a very alpine terrain, we want to set this terrain type value to a high value, such as 100 here. If we are shading a hilly terrain, we want to choose an intermediate value. And if we are uh, shading a flat or rounded rolling hills terrain, then we want to select a small value. So here is an example. This is an area that it, it's, it's very smooth, as very smooth terrain uh, with, with rounded hills, rolling hills. So, but the, the shading doesn't look like this at all. It, it looks like an alpine, 
alpine area. And the reason is that the terrain type value here is at 100. So let's adjust this again in a few steps. As, you, as I re reduce this value, the shading starts to look smoother and rounder. Maybe not as beautiful and impactful as the first version, but it more accurately portrays the, the terrain in this case. So again, um, let's recap. So this is the uh, Alpine rendering. This is with uh, lower terrain type values and probably that one here in this particular case works quite nicely. So I can also do the opposite. So here I have uh, Alaska, um, very Alpine glaciated mountain ranges and the terrain type here is at 50. If I increase this to an alpine value, then you can see the, the mountains um, stand out and being accentuated more. Okay, so <clears throat> once you are satisfied with your um, shading, you can then save it to an image. Uh, you can save it to a GeoTIFF file or a PNG JPEG file with world files and Cornet uh, projection system files and then use it in your, in your GIS uh, or other software. So um, I invite you to have a look at edward.earth, which is our website. You can also find a user guide there to find more details of what's possible with, with Edward. Edward is also on Twitter. And uh, you can find it on the Mac App Store. Um, the introductory price is $70 until the end of NASIS uh, on the 23rd of October, I believe, after which the price will be $99. And uh, I have a few examples here, which I will show in a slideshow, and um, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. I can already answer the first question. So uh, we don't have a Windows version. And uh, second question also, uh, we don't have plans currently to develop a Windows version, uh, maybe in the future, but we don't have plans right now. Not my question. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. <laughs> so I haven't used it yet, so I'm, I'm sure I'll be experimenting with this a lot. Thank you so much for developing. It looks fantastic. It, I just can't imagine how much time it can save in, in certain kinds of shaded relief. But I'm curious about your three settings at the top, the three, and how they relate to the settings down below. Are those summarizing a set of settings below? Because they look like they're sort of interrelated. A lot of these settings look like they can affect the same visual style. Um, yes, to a certain degree. So I can show you this here. Um. Yeah, yeah. So, so this, this particular, this style here generalizes quite a bit. So it has general, generalization. Oops, sorry. Uh, just let me, oops. That's a bit difficult now, okay. So, um, so this style here integrates generalization, um, whereas these two other styles have less generalization. But you can still adjust the level of generalization here with these sliders. So I'm not quite sure, I don't really see what I'm doing right now. Um, but they are independent, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, different different algorithms, yeah. Yeah. More questions if anyone else has Thank you. This looks really amazing. Uh, for the terrain type a slider, could you foresee a feature where it gives an automatic recommendation for given the the this underlying terrain, yeah. Um, possibly, maybe in the future. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah. I looked down for a second when you downloaded the data. Where, what button is that one? And also, does it just come in at, I guess, Web Mercator projection when you download it through there? Yes, so um, I think the button is here, yeah. So you have uh, various options here. Uh, uh, so these are available in geographic, pro geographic projection and Mercator projection. Um, yeah, and but the, um, so when you uh, export the file, uh, so, you, so you can also export the grid, reproject it, and then re-import in another projection. So that's possible as well. So, yeah. Um, so across a large and diverse landscape, uh, over here, um, across a large and diverse landscape, um, is the histogram that is produced from it relative? to the individual locations that are casting a shadow, or is it from the highest point in a given DEM across that landscape, if that makes sense? Um, histogram, um, are you referring to the histogram down here? I'm not quite sure. Yes, correct. The, so the, the, the shadows that are placed at a certain place, um, a highest point with a very steep place will have a much more shadow or places, but across a very diverse landscape, you might want to show hills that are, you know, important in that area um, while also not making the tallest mountain just completely dark. Uh, yeah, so, so um, this is what the terrain type slider then is for. So then you can adjust that. Um, to, to make uh, some, some certain elevations pop out more. Yeah, that, that's the purpose of the terrain type slider. Thanks, Bernie. It always blows me away when you show your stuff. Is the, is the data that gets exported what's in the view? Yes, yeah, yeah. So, um, so you can either um, export a shading or export a grid. Yeah, but if, if uh, so, if you if you download a grid, then you can also use it elsewhere. That's why we export the grid as well. But uh, yeah, so the shading is a geotiff or a PNG or a JPEG with world files and projection files. Yeah. Yeah, we have one. We have time for another question. So. Can you say a little bit more about the machine learning process? Was that, you know, were you feeding in like existing maps or, or were there actually like some Swiss cartographers involved in some, some of those inputs? Yeah, so um, we are using um, the shadings that were created for the Swiss national map series by Swiss Topo. Currently we are using three different scales which result in these three different styles. So the uh, the small scale style to the right is the smallest scale they have, so it's only one to 500,000. Um, and the largest scale is one to 50,000 currently. Um, and so the, there is a set of, I don't rem remember how many there were, but 50, 50 or so sheets at the scale of uh, 50,000. And so we use those and to train the model. Yeah, uh, there is a potential that we could add additional styles in the future with uh, other Swiss style, uh, Swiss topo shadings or, other pos or possibly with other, with other shadings by, by other agencies or other cartographers. 